60 Cycle Hum features a mix of products that were purchased or provided and content that is a mix of sponsored, paid, unpaid, and Patreon funded. Use your eyes, ears, and common sense to come to your own conclusions. I'm Ryan, you're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and in this video, I'm going to guide you through the D'Angelico Deluxe Brighton. I've had this guitar around for about a month and a half now, plenty of time to form some opinions, make some observations, and now I'm ready to share them with you. Let's go over the general details here. Clearly, it is a solid body guitar with a double cut style, double humbuckers, two pneumatic, stop tail, four knob, three by three headstock, you get it. The neck is a 24 and three quarters inch scale. The radius of the fretboard is 14 inches, nice and flat and fast there. The frets are like this modern medium jumbo thing, dressed very well, polished to a mirror finish. I'm very impressed with the fret work. It's got that thing going on where they're backed off of the binding on the edges just slightly. These frets are never gonna like catch on your skin or anything like that. They feel really nice and smooth, really high quality playability with this guitar here. The details, the cosmetic details are over the top. I mean, look at this guitar. It is flamboyant. <laughs> From the D'Angelico traditional headstock here with this crazy like insect mandible thing going on with the little metal stud in the middle. Very unique. D'Angelico has their own thing going on aesthetically and they carry it through to the pit guard. This is a reference, this little bulb here, this stamen coming down with the bulb is a reference to, you know, like an F hole in a, you know, in a jazz box guitar. It's very interesting. It's very stylistic that they brought it into a solid body guitar as the pit guard. Um, on certain models, it's been a thing that catches my eye funny. I think it works on this one. Um, but what do you think? I wanna know what you guys think in the comment section about the aesthetics of these D'Angelico solid body guitars. I think also the finish of this one works. Um, in previous runs, they've had more like colorful finishes. I think this more muted champagne sparkle works really well with this more flamboyant shape. Like it, as a whole, it makes more sense. Oh, I forgot to mention, it's got locking tuners on there. Uh, <laughs> The tuning pegs are this very like art deco style thing going on, which carries through the rest of the guitar. I mean, the the, the heritage of D'Angelico is this early 20th century New York art deco sort of thing. And you've got that in spades with this guitar. You've got like a seven or eight layer binding all the way around the edge of the front of the guitar. Around the fretboard, you have binding with stripes on the outside edge and the inside edge, and then more binding around the headstock, completely going around and wrapping inside the little insect mandible part of the headstock. You have a very Art Deco uh, truss rod cover here. It's just, the details, they throw as many details at this guitar as they can. The knobs are custom. They're these wooden, like, I think they're ebony, wooden knobs with a little bit of like an Art Deco detail on them as well. It doesn't stop. Locking uh, strap buttons here. I still need to install those strap button locks onto a strap for this guitar. Uh, a really modern feature is the blend between the body and the neck. Very, very modern comfort heel here. This is not a throwback to the 1920s, that is for sure. I really appreciate the detail of this glossy sparkly finish terminating at the neck at this angle right here to match the angle of your hand. And then the back of the neck is 
super, super matte. It is so smooth. It honestly feels like there's baby powder on it. It feels like baby powder inside of like a surgical glove. And then it transitions. They didn't need to do this. This is purely cosmetic. It transitions back to a high gloss finish on the back of the headstock with that same angle right about there. That's all cosmetic. They could have continued the matte finish all the way up and it would have been cheaper for them to produce. I'm sure of it. Also another pinstripe up the back of the neck, part of the construction, some sort of different kind of wood sandwiched in the middle there. The neck itself is very compact feeling. It's like a round C shape, a little bit smaller than say like a Gibson style neck or even a Fender style neck. It's very, it's very small. If you've got a small hand or you appreciate like a small feeling neck, this is gonna do it for you. If you like a chunky neck, I would stay away from this guitar. That's just the honest truth. Um, hmm. Let's talk about some jeers. I've done enough cheers. Uh, my biggest issue with this guitar, the thing that I would change if I was to change anything is the knobs. I really like that they're made out of wood. I think they're very classy looking, but these are your access to the coil cuts for your humbuckers. And they're too damn smooth. I feel like one in three times that I try to pull these out while I'm playing, I fumble and I don't get them. Um, there needs to be like a little bit of a carve like in the middle here or some sort of change to the shape to give you something more substantial to grab onto because they're fluted and they're very smooth, very soft feeling wood and they can be just kind of tricky. Like unless you're really intentional with like a four finger style here to grab them, it, like just now, I was trying to pull it and I didn't succeed. You have to be very intentional to pull them out and I wish that they were a little bit easier. Honestly, a quick fix for this would be swapping out those pots for the push style pots where you push it and then it clicks out and then you push it back in and it re-clicks in. I think that would be really nice. Or I could modify the knobs with like a Dremel or something like that. I, I'm sure. I would just muck that up. I would make them look so ugly if I tacked it with a Dremel. But a little bit of a groove in there just to give my fingers something to grab onto would be nice. Another issue that I had with it, out of the box, and this is gonna be very subjective. This might not be an issue for you. This might be a feature. This came out of the box set up too damn fast. It was ridiculous. Who do they think I am? I'm not some sort of ridiculous shredder. It was set up so that the strings were floating on top of the frets with like a tissue paper's width <laughs> away from those frets. And there weren't really any technical issues with that. The strings all rang true across the entire fretboard. I couldn't find any dead spots or anything like that, but it's just not comfortable for me. I prefer a string that floats above the frets a little bit, just a little bit. So I actually made some adjustments to this, yes, Guitar YouTubers do make adjustments to guitars sometimes uh, to make them fit their playing style. I tweaked the truss rod a little bit. If you've never tweaked a truss rod, I encourage you to give it a shot sometime. Um, you take off the truss rod cover, you find an Allen wrench that fits, and you're not going for full rotations here. You're not going around and around. You're going, and then you retune, and you measure, you check things out, make sure it's okay, and then you go, again, or you go the other way if you figured out that you need to go the other way. So I made a truss adjustment to get the action where I like it to be. I also swapped out the strings. Again, I've had this guitar around for about a month and a half. I wanted to demo it with a clean set of strings, but they come stock with 10s. I put 11s on there, and I think that contributed to the action going up just a little bit, and it still plays plenty, plenty fast. There's nothing about this guitar that is slowing me down at all. The thing slowing me down is my level of talent. <laughs> so let's get into some sound demonstrations now. Check the tune really quick. I didn't mention that the pickups are Seymour Duncans, by the way. They're Seth lovers, and I think they're really like clear sounding. I don't usually like humbuckers because they can tend to be somewhat muddy, but they're very clear sounding uh, pickups in general. Maybe it's the construction of the guitar that contributes to that, but I've been very impressed with the tonality of it when I'm stacking it into just piles and piles of you know, like distortions and time-based effects and stuff like that. This guitar cuts through the mix, even with all that gnarly you know, effect pedal stuff that I like to do. 
<clears throat> All right. Here is the bridge pickup in the humbucker position. Let's try it with the coil split setting here. Fumbled with that a little bit. Big output drop when you go for the coil cut. That should be expected though. Back to the humbucker. Yeah, those pickups are pretty hot. I usually like a pickup that is kind of lower output, like down in the 8K range. I don't know what these measure at. But I'm assuming that they're not 8K. I'm guessing like nine and a half, maybe even 10 or 11 or something like that. Tell me if you know the measurement of these pickups. Tell me in the comments. All right, on to the neck pickup in the humbucker position. I'm getting a little bit lost here. Here it is, coil cut. Again, these knobs. You see what I mean? It has this very clear, kind of like icy, articulate sort of thing going on. Something you should know is that because it has this very compact and long neck, I mean, the neck goes all the way down to the body, but there's something about the neck where you can really feel the flexibility of the neck. Like every guitar, if you strum a big cowboy chord, you can press the body and kind of, you know, monkey grip it into doing a little bit of a bend or a dive or pull it. This guitar feels a little bit extra in that territory. So if that's something that bugs you, stay away from it. If that's something that you use as part of your playing, then this guitar does it in spades. Who needs a Bixby, right? <laughs> but the neck is totally stable. I've had zero tuning issues with this guitar. Um, yeah. It could be a feature or a flaw, depending on your perspective. Let's start throwing some effects at it because that can tell us a lot about the sound of the pickups. Let's start off with kind of a surfy reverb here from the Milkman F-Stop. Try it with the coil split. The single coil setting actually sounds pretty decent in my opinion. Let's try the neck pickup.
here it is, coil cut. Come on. I'm telling you, those knobs, they need some sort of grip. There's something about this guitar that makes me want to play oldies. Not just surf, but like oldies in general. Like I feel like it might have a little bit of like a Motown soul to it. And like I said, even with my monkeying around with the trust rod, man, it is. It is a lightning fast guitar. Um, a pickup setting that I actually really like is combining uh, a humbucker with a coil split. So I'll show that off. That is a split neck pickup and a humbucker bridge. Let's turn off the reverb so you can hear that a little bit better. Here it is, just the neck, which is split. Here is that bridge humbucker. And then the middle position again. Now we'll reverse that, humbucker in the neck, split in the bridge. Overdrive now? Why not? Here is the bridge humbucker through my 5050 pedal, which is a DoD 250. <laughs> Am I really playing that? What year is it? Feels like 1997 all of a sudden. All right, here is the neck pickup. I like that the neck pickup is throaty, but it doesn't get super crazy dark or anything like that. Here it is, coil cut. And then that middle position with uh, the cut neck and the humbucker bridge. Reverse that. And then both humbuckers on.
bunch of effects. All right, so I've got the wave cannon for the distortion. I'm going to throw on the Astral Destiny, which is a shim reverb. I've got a DD8 on. I'm going to throw on the reverb from the F-stop. And I'm going to put on the warped vinyl for chorus. affected mess but there's something about this guitar where it has this clarity to it it has this like this high-end punch through the mix that allows the guitar to still kind of breathe and communicate through that giant mess of pedals going on <laughs> an interesting experience. It's an inter interesting point to make. I played with this thing at church this past Sunday, threw my big pedal board, stacking all kinds of effects, and I just remember thinking like, wow, even with me burying this, and it should just be mush at the point that I've buried it underneath all these effects, I'm still getting a really nice response out of this guitar. I'm still getting like it cutting through the mix and it still sounds like a guitar. Maybe I'm just tripping. I don't know, it might all be in my head, but you know, that's, that's part of the way we connect with the guitars. There's responses we get from them and ways we connect with them that aren't always fully explainable. They're all, they don't always make sense on paper, but when you're playing it, like it makes sense to you. And to me, this feels like a guitar that has this clarity to it. It has this bright high end that just kind of slices through effects in a really pleasing way. What do you think? I want to know what you guys think about this guitar. Um, what do you think of my presentation of it? Do you have any questions? Ask me down below. I don't think there's anything else I need to cover. What do you think of the looks? <laughs> I keep looking at it. I'm like, is this guitar my style? I'm not sure. I feel like I should be wearing like a velvet hat with a giant feather coming out of it to match the flamboyance of this guitar or some sort of like really out there silk shirt. I don't know. Maybe it needs like a purple velvet strap to go with it. What do you guys think in that direction? All right, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. Click all the links. Buy a shirt if you're naked and stay grounded. Bye, everybody.